thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, my name is Pavel and uh, together with my colleague we will introduce you what we are developing in Concamino the Laboratory Europe. Uh, the topic is the AI in the office. We will not talk about all the topics that we are trying to solve to achieve the AI in the office, but we will focus mainly on uh, machine learning and application in computer vision. Uh, so, in, in the talk I will give you a short introduction about our lab here in Brno and about Konecamino Laboratory Europe. Uh, I will also describe the goal that we are trying to achieve to uh, be able to provide the AI for the office and where we are heading. Uh, I will describe the role of machine learning and how we implement it and use it in, in our solution. And I will also uh, describe the current status and the future direction where we are uh, going. At first, I will start uh, with, a, uh, with a use case. Uh, imagine you are, uh, you are a journalist for Pet Magazine and your boss asks you to write an article about this dog breed, uh, which is not really famous here. And uh, he tells you, uh, please do it, but this is not the highest pro priority, so you can write it in one or two months. And here is the document, and I will show you where it is safe, uh, stored. So you start reading, and uh, you read the, what is the name of the dog breed, this is an African one, uh, something about the history, it comes from Nigeria, uh, it, uh, it was the companion of the, of the nomads and uh, you see how, how it looks like. What happens when your boss says it's not the highest priority, you can do it in one or two months. You start doing completely different stuff and we will do it as well. So I will give you the introduction about Konecamino Laboratory Europe. Uh, our headquarters is located in London and it was established two and a half years ago. Uh, the first lab it, uh, that was created was, uh, is here in Brno. Uh, we are focused on digital workplace. Uh, then there is a lab focused on digital healthcare and the newest one uh, that, that is focused on smart systems. What do we do in Brno? Uh, we have four, four main research areas. Uh, one is doing artificial intelligence and smart data systems. Then we are also doing uh, human-computer interaction, IoT and data analytics. And the last but not least is the group of computer vision where, where me and my colleagues are from. Uh, now I will go to, to the description of what we are doing in, in general and what we are trying to achieve. At first I need to start with a problem that we are trying to solve. There are many problems in, in the offices that everyone meets every day, uh, but I will describe uh, one common that you can easily ima imagine. So the problem is the time spent with memorizing the information. You need to remember a lot of stuff that you need for your work and that you will need in the future that is mentioned somewhere in the meeting and so on. You also need a lot of time uh, for, looking, for looking for reliable information. For example, you are creating some report for your boss, you are writing some article, uh, you are preparing some presentation, and you, you need to find the right data. Another problem is that less than 25% of the unstructured data are analyzed. Uh, this is the number that was given by Forrester and their research performed last year. And uh, by unstructured data, we mean the data that are not uh, structured, of course, uh, but these are not the data that are used, for example, in the predictive maintenance, where you have some data from sensors, where it is defined how the data will look like. The unstructured data can be documents, text where there is not defined structure for it. So the use case that we will describe here is the information flow and access to the information. Uh, the goal is 
as we are trying to solve the first problems that I showed at the beginning, we want to transform the busy workers that are busy by the boring, tedious task as, for example, searching for the information and finding it uh, into efficient workers where they can really focus on their duties. Uh, our development strategy is highly uh, based on partnership because we are quite small team here. Uh, we are about 25 or 30 people. So we can't do the whole AI for the office, of course. So we are looking for partners that can deliver us uh, the AI solutions that are focused for particular problems and we are mainly integrated in it into our whole solution which is called Cognitive Hub. The Cognitive Hub is an integration, uh, AI integration platform. It is basically an operate, operating system that can uh, bring benefits to the customers in, uh, in the way that it changes the way how the workers work because it can automatically, in the future, uh, bring all the necessary information to the users. Cognitive Hub is, uh, uh, consists of five main parts. Uh, one is uh, the environment sensing part, which basically means that uh, we are integrating IoT sensors for uh, sensing the, the whole environment. So this is, this is one of the hardware part of the Cognitive Hub. Uh, all this information are then analyzed by data analytics platform uh, which is trying to analyze the time series and predict the future of, of the devices. And then we have the interaction manager uh, where we are integrating the solution for natural user interface so that users can interact with the, with the cognitive app and the computers in the most natural way like voice and gestures, for example. So in the way how you communicate with other people. Uh, then there is a part of semantic platform uh, that is analyzing the human behavior and uh, understanding the user in order to provide the information most suitable for him. And the machine learning platform that we will describe here during this presentation. And this platform supports all of these by deployment, deploying and executing the machine learning models because uh, most of the AR solutions are based on machine learning. So uh, we need to somehow run all the models. Okay, uh, I'm coming back to the, to the slide with the talk, if you, if you remember. And uh, I, I have a question for you. If you if you had uh, such, a, such a task from your boss and you completely forget after one or two months what, what you should really do, you just know that you should prepare some, some article about, about this information that were provided to you and you need to search for, for the document that, that your boss mentioned. So in normal way, how you search for the information, you start typing the name of the document, right? but you don't remember after one month and you maybe didn't even know it uh, in that time. So searching by the document name it works, but uh, not always. So what you can do then is searching by location. Okay, this is very similar. If you don't know the name, you probably don't know where, this is, where it is stored. So you, you may try some other thing and this is called full text search. This works pretty well if you know what, for example, was the name of the dog breed. Is there anyone who really remember how the dog breed was called? No. So in this case it, it won't work as well. So you may try some different words. So for example, you know that it was about the dog, right? So Okay, dog breed name. What word? A word dog? It was not mentioned there at all. So, you know it was a dog breed, so let's try the word breed. 
Okay, it, it wasn't there at all again. So let's try and summarize what you remember about the document. So you probably um, remember the document type. You, you know it was a slide presentation. So you may try searching for the presentation. If, if you just search for all the presentation, you will spend a lot of time finding the right information. So you know the topic. So probably it was some talk read. Okay, you may try this. But you need to understand the document. You also know how it looked like because the human memory is highly uh, visual. So you re remember that there was some title, there was a short paragraph, and that there was a picture. And you probably remember how the picture looked like. Was there a cat? No. Was there a dog? Yes. So let's try to summarize. This is the document that, we sh that I showed you at the beginning. And what technologies we need to really find this document if you don't know any word for the full text search, if you don't know the, the name of the document or location. So, if you want to be able to search in the most natural way, you just provide some sentence, find me a document uh, that mentioned some dog breed, was about uh, its history and there was a picture of dog. You need some human computer interaction technology. You also need semantic technologies for understanding the context of the text and for that you need to understand the natural language. And last but not least is computer vision because you need to understand the visualized, uh, visual information that was covered there. For all of these you need to, some machine learning models and you need to run them somewhere. And uh, therefore, we are building the machine learning platform, and my colleague Peter will tell you more about that. Thank you. Uh, so, as, uh, as Pavel already said, uh, we uh, have uh, some implementation of uh, machine learning models in the cognitive system. All the models which, yeah, all the models uh, which are used, uh, okay, okay, sit, uh, sit in uh, this yellow box called machine learning platform, which is basically a set of services uh, which enable deployment of uh, machine learning models and calling them through uh, some standardized interface. So, what you see is an example of a user who wants to uh, do some document or image tagging. So, uh, he has some image, wants to recognize it, uh, recognize what's, what's on, on it, and uh, uses some uh, service which does uh, this function. This service calls uh, the so called machine learning platform service central platform, a central service of the platform and the service already knows which uh, models it should call uh, in order to uh, do the desired function. Okay, so what if uh, we need to update uh, the models in the platform or we want to have uh, some uh, new models uh, so, in this case, you need someone who knows machine learning. Yeah, I think there, there is no, no a, a other option. Uh, so, let's call uh, this person data scientist, and he or she will prepare uh, the new or updated models using whatever tools are needed for it, and then uh, the uh, models, the model is deployed uh, to uh, the uh, machine learning platform, basically by copying some exported uh, version of, of the model. We support TensorFlow models, mainly for deep learning, and we support also 
H2O models. The H2O is uh, I think a very, very good uh, machine learning platform uh, which targets mainly structured data. It's, it's widely, widely used. And we have also some adapters uh, to cloud platforms for, for machine learning like, like MAGA. So, uh, if uh, uh, your model uh, can uh, run under TensorFlow, and especially if it, can, it can, if it can run under TensorFlow serving, you can easily deploy it uh, to uh, the platform and to the community hub uh, as a system. So, and there is a nice part uh, that you, the, the system is open. So, if you want uh, to add some model which you think could be useful for office environment, uh, then uh, we, we are open to, to collaboration. I think that there are not, not many people doing machine learning uh, here in the Konica Minolta uh, laboratory. But no, so, uh, it, it's really we are we, we looking forward to, to have a collaboration with someone who wants uh, to put their models in, into the platform. Another possibility is to collaborate with the future customers of the uh, Cognitive Hub. So you can develop uh, specific models for, for the customer and again deploy it in a very simple way uh, to, to, the, to the system. <coughs> so here's a bit more technical slide uh, which uh, shows what uh, the machine learning platform is doing uh, with, uh, with the requests uh, sent uh, from, from some client application. Uh, it gets uh, some standard uh, requests, some standard st structure which serves as a request for, for some machine learning functionality and uh, it knows from some configuration file written in JSON that, uh, for instance, the tagging functionality needs uh, these uh, two models, uh, image uh, classification and object detection, and that the first model needs uh, the input be resampled to some specific resolution. So, it, it will get the input data, uh, do the input transformation, it calls the models and then it uh, uh, takes the output of the models and combines them into some resulting structure which is sent back uh, to the client. So, I think this is just a uh, very brief introduction of uh, how uh, the machine learning models are are implemented in, in the cognitive app and now I can switch back to Pavel so we can tell you more about cognitive application which we have done. Thank you. Uh, so one of the main use cases that we are uh, using or uh, that we are developing in the machine learning platform is uh, focused on image recognition. The motivation for us, uh, as you could see from the examples at the beginning, is searching for visual data or based by this visual information. For that, we need, in order to support the searching uh, functionality, extract the metadata from the image. So, imagine you have a document with an image inside and uh, you want to find it. So, this image can look like this, for example. Now, it's gone and I will again try to ask you what you remember about the picture. So, do you remember some car there? Was there a car? Motorcycle. Motorcycle, good. A dog? Great. Some other animal? No? People? Do you know how many of them? At least two. Okay. Some pedestrians? Probably. 
Was there a road or a house? Yeah. If, if I ask different people, everyone tell me some different objects or topics that was mentioned in the picture. Okay, so this is the picture I showed you. And uh, you probably have heard about the success of image recognition, that the research is pretty good, it's almost 100% accurate, but these are the marketing stuff about computer vision and image recognition. If you want to apply it in practice, it, it won't work as you expected. So you need to combine several different approaches or models to achieve the goal and be able to search for the pictures. And uh, these are, uh, for example, you can apply the image classification. So, for example, the image classification says there's a moment. Okay, yeah, it's not bad. But this is not everything. You, you won't be able to find this image just based on this information. Uh, so, we need to add also some, some tagging of the picture. And these tags are non exclusive, so you can have more, more results. There's a motorcycle, a road, helmet. That's pretty good. But there are still some more objects inside and uh, some different types of environment that are not mentioned. So you want to also do the, the whole scene classification, which has a bit different approach and categorizes images in different categories than uh, in classification. So for example, the scene classification said, this is a parking lot. Okay, there are some parked cars, yeah, it works, but this is still not enough. So we want to also go deeper, not only uh, analyze one picture as, as one thing, but we want to go deeper. So we want to detect objects. So here we can see that there are really some people, there is also one pedestrian, but it was not visible. Uh, so you want to detect objects such as person or motorbike or whatever and in order to give some more information and search for example based on the color of the motorbike or a car or a dog we also need to segment it and so we can then extract for example the color or the size of the dog so we can say which object is more relevant for the results or which, which one is the most dominant object in, in the picture. So, for this, for all of these technologies, we combine multiple approaches. Again, uh, we use the solutions that are uh, provided by partners. We also use pre trained uh, state of the art convolutional neural networks. For example, for the segmentation, we used Mask RCNN. For the object detection, uh, we used fast RCNN, and uh, but this is not really enough for the office environment. Imagine you are in the office environment, you are in a company, you have a lot of presentation or presentations or documents, and general models for uh, detection of dogs, cars, people. This really doesn't fit into the data you have. You probably have data like charts or diagrams. So we need to also transfer the knowledge that was learned on the standard data, on the database like ImageNet. We need to transfer it and retrain new models for, and for our typical data that we have in the environment. For this retraining and creating new models, uh, we use, of course, TensorFlow because TensorFlow is the backend that we have in the machine learning platform. And we started to play with uh, transferring and retraining the inception network, for example, for our purposes. It worked pretty well, but uh, once we try to put e export the model for running on TensorFlow serving, we spent 
approximately two or three days exporting it, but it was still not in the correct format. For some reason, we were not able to run it in TensorFlow Serving. I'm still not sure why. I tried to search for a solution quite a lot. Of, uh, I spent a lot of time on it, and I found that so many people weren't able to, to do it. Maybe you know how to do it. If, if you know, please tell me, because I'll be really happy to know it. But then I tried, uh, I decided to try Keras for that. So I took the same network, retrain it on the same data, and write, I, I written a code, and in one hour it was done. Okay, so this is my experience, uh, and that's the reason why we also started using Keras for it. And, uh, and I will show you another use case uh, that how you can apply computer vision in, in the office. Uh, this is a use case that we, are, we were developing a year ago for the proof of concept of our Cognitive Hub uh, as a demonstrator. And this was part of the scenario uh, of the whole demonstrator. And we called it uh, meeting execution. Uh, the scenario and the use case was that uh, imagine you are in a meeting and there is some proposal from someone and you want to decide whether it is a good idea or not. So you start voting and instead of voting like, uh, okay, hands up who is for and hands up who doesn't agree, uh, we try to build a solution that can just, where you would just show thumb up or down and the system would count everything for you and it's up. And we created a demo, uh, we had a lot of data from our offices, uh, we trained a network, and since we wanted to know who was uh, voting them up or down, we also used Kinect, so we have, because it has a depth sensor, so we can decide uh, who's, who's thumb is uh, who's. So, then it was the day of the presentation to, to our management in London. We came to London and we tried to set everything up. And we started testing again. We, we tested this, this prototype in our lab for like one month. Everything worked correctly and so we came to London. We started testing and it didn't work. Okay, what happened? We have like uh, three hours to the presentation and it didn't work. So, at first, when you could see the table, this was the table like this, or the, and uh, you would probably say, this is because of it, because uh, there is different, the, the color is very similar to, to the hands, and so on. So, we started testing more deeply. We used only one hand, here in this position it worked, we moved to another, it didn't work. Okay, what happened? So, uh, since I, I was here in Brno and support, and I was developing it and supporting the colleagues in, in London, it was not that easy as it could be if I were, if I were there. So, uh, I, I looked at the pictures remotely, what it connects in. So, we found that it saw this picture, but there was suddenly the detected thumb down here for this person. What happened? It's not possible. So we found, maybe you now have an idea, but we found that there was a light source that projected a shadow here, <laughs> and both of them were detected. Moreover, this one was detected with higher confidence than the <laughs> and the hand here. Okay, we didn't have time to really get the new data and retrain the whole network uh, for one day or uh, something like this. So the quick fix was to remove this light source. <laughs> and it worked. <clears throat> 
So uh, the reason why I was talking about this is uh, I wanted to show you another use case how we can apply computer vision uh, in offices and how you can also fail in this if you don't test it in the target environment because you never know what can happen there. You, you can't really simulate all the conditions in your, uh, in your development environment because this type of data we didn't see and you can't really think about all the possibilities that you can meet there. Okay, coming back to, to the search technology that we are developing um, and uh, the use case information flow and information for documents based on the visual data. Imagine you have this picture of the multifunctional printer. If you are a standard user, you just take the picture, uh, put it into the network or the machine learning platform and you get the results like this where here is the confidence how these are not the probabilities, of course, because it doesn't sum to, sum up to 100, but the confidence is how, <coughs> yeah, how probable it is that this is this class. And you have the printer in the first place. Wow, that's correct. You are happy with the results and you say, it works, that's brilliant. But imagine if you are a dealer of multifunctional printers and you have a lot of them in your database, then this information start to be useless for you. Because, okay, this is printer, I know it, and all these printers are labeled with the same label. So what you really want, you need to have this, of course, because you can have some other type of data, but you want to know which printer it is. So you need to have an additional model that tells you uh, what customer-specific data you have. So, as I said, we currently are here where we have the general models and we are developing the models for recognition of uh, charts or diagrams. But we would like to, in, as a short-term goal, provide a functionality uh, where the customer just takes the data, label them, of course, we, we are working with supervised learning, put it into the machine learning platform, and it will automatically create a new model, model for him. And so he will be able to understand and analyze his customer-specific data. But as you can see, there is still some space left, so we don't want to stop here. We want to go further. Imagine you are in a company and you have a lot of employees and they are storing your data somewhere either in the cloud or your local storage. You don't want them to label all, all, your, all your data because it's really time consuming. You need to spend a lot of time or hire somewhere else to, to label them. So we want this machine learning platform to go further and in the, let's say, unsupervised, unsupervised fashion to understand the data, learning the new context that you can see there, adding some new information, analyzing the documents and extracting all this beneficial information for you. For example, for computer vision, find the uh, mention the words or sentences that mention this type of picture and can add this information in order to retrain the model, improve the learning and so on. Okay, as I said at the beginning, we, uh, our development strategy is highly based on partnership with either companies or universities can be a small startup or large company, a research institute. And we are very interested in partners that are doing machine learning, computer vision, 
natural language processing, IoT, data analytics, and uh, human computer interaction. So, if any of you is interested in partnership and helping us to achieve our final goal, uh, this is the real AI in the office. Please come to us and we can discuss how we both can benefit from it. So, this is what we are developing, this is the Cognitive Hub. And uh, thank you very much for your attention and I'm looking for forward to your question. So thank you for your presentation and let's start the questions and answer section. So any questions? Okay, let's look at the Slido. I like the okay. first one. <laughs> okay, so uh, the first uh, question is, what type of small businesses will be your first target customer? What kind of computer vision task will you provide to them? Um, thank you for the question. Uh, I have to admit, I'm not from the business part, <laughs> I'm, I'm from the research. Um, I, I can more answer the second question, uh, which is about uh, what kind of computer vision task will you provide to them. Uh, as you could see, we are mainly currently focused on information flow and accessing to the information, searching for the information. So, our first task and what we are currently developing is supporting these search functionalities by analyzing the, the images that we have in, or the customer has in, in the database. So this is, this is the first one and yeah, the most important right now. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next question, what are the practical applications of AI that can help programmer in his work. Are we even focusing to helping programmers? Uh, of course, we can help everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, here again, this is about searching for the information. So, for example, all the companies have some standards or some processes. So, uh, we this is some kind of information that you could pro uh, potentially look be looking for so all the information that are uh, associated with, with your with your programming task and uh, maybe I have a uh, general framework uh, I think the programmers can use whatever AI technology is available for implementing the solution because I think uh, uh, the machine learning uh, Techniques are useful, especially when you don't know how to how to implement your solution. You don't know how to how to solve your task reliably by uh, manually crafting algorithms. So, yeah. So, so uh, I think it's very useful to learn at least basics of machine learning for every every programmer. When, when you encounter pro a problem a very, which you can't solve just by sitting and typing, then it, it can be very useful. Okay, so, uh, if you have any questions from the audience, just raise your hands and I will give you the microphone. Okay, so, uh, are you looking for a partnership also with freelancers, contractors or just bigger companies? Uh, we are looking for partnership with everyone. We also have some contractors and freelancers that are uh, doing some specific tasks for us. So don't be afraid to come. So uh, another question is: You mentioned machine learning models for image annotations or understanding. Is it in house developed or acquired? Uh, it is both of them. Uh, as, as I mentioned, for example, for the segmentation and uh, the object detection, we use 
uh, pre-trained models that are developed uh, by state-of-the-art researchers and uh, made available for public public usage. Uh, but for for chart and uh, diagram uh, classification, we use, as, as I mentioned, transfer learning. So we are using the networks that were trained pre-trained before, and we are transferring the knowledge that was uh, learned by these networks into our domain. So we are retraining these networks for our purposes. Okay, so uh, do you do anything yet in the area of unsupervised learning? Any potential partners in this area? Uh, not yet. But if, if you are working in unsupervised learning, uh, I would be really happy to talk with you. Uh, so the general idea is to use the interactions of the office workers with the documents and with the whole office staff to extract some information about the semantics of the document they are working with, right? Yes, exactly. Learn their, their behavior, their decision making and supporting them in future. Okay. So have you considered launching a Kaggle challenge for the machine learning community? Is it for me or for for our group? <laughs> yes. uh, we we don't have resources for really uh, be part of, of this Kaggle challenge, and we are not focused on the pure research. We are more focused on application of the research that has already been done by someone else. Uh, do you have some machine learning models for voice files, like meeting recordings, some analysis? Uh, Unfortunately, not uh, because I'm mainly considering computer vision area because I'm a computer vision guy and we don't have anyone who is really working with uh, voice recognition. So again, we are uh, we are using some third-party models. So, uh, what kind of data sources or company databases you plan to use? General questions, maybe like yeah, uh, data data source types. I know images. <laughs> I don't really know what what to, what to say to this. Uh, maybe some other guys from uh, your company can answer. <laughs> no, we we plan to. Uh, we have some models that are already trained, and for improving the models in the future. We will use the data that are stored in customer's uh, database, so we can retrain the model with, with it. Uh, but we will, we are not thinking about uh, buying some new database or, or something like this. So you are basically providing the product that will search through the documents of your client, like of some small office but company, the, right? The, the, this is not the main. The whole part of the project. This is this is just the use case that I described here because we didn't have time to go through the okay. whole yeah. AI in the office. Okay. So, uh, what do you think about Google Auto ML? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I don't. I've never heard. Yeah, about it, so. it's, it's like a, it's a system for uh, automatically choosing the best model or the best architecture of the model for a given task. Yeah. Do you, have you? yeah, there are some promising works uh, for uh, you know, finding uh, optimal uh, net network architecture uh, you know, by, by some kind of, of, of smart search. Uh, I read an article interview with uh, Sundar Pichai who is uh, the CEO of, of Google and he thinks that we are three to five years from really practically working automated machine learning so you just have your data and uh, you uh, have some like, basic knowledge maybe of, of statistics and the system will make a uh, machine learning model for, for you which, which predicts uh, the, the features which you are interested in. Uh, yeah, I, I think you know 
the devil is, is a promising work. Uh, it's basic research now, and definitely uh, it needs a, a lot of uh, computation. Yeah. Uh, so mm, the, the Google has uh, some some art, uh, some uh, open source uh, uh, work uh, or, 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 or open source tools for, for this. Uh, also, uh, 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 just look at H2O AI site. They have uh, automated machine learning uh, application which is available. You can buy it. I think it's about $75,000 per GPU. <laughs> yeah, but but I, I hope that it will be much, much cheaper because people will, will start to, to implement the, the, the own solution. So, so in short, uh, I, I, it's, it's unclear how far we can go with auto ML, but it's, it seems that we, we, we can push it forward at least a, a bit. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it would be like nice uh, addition to your system. It's like automated uh, model from the data, right? So it's like fit in the vision. Yeah, so, yeah, next yeah. question. Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, our, our our system, uh, at least the, the, the current moment, is not very well suited for for, for automated machine learning. We we uh, suppose that the data scientists will use whatever is available on the market, and uh, uh, that then they will be able to easily deploy the models. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. But it can change in the future. Okay, so you're focusing on deployment, which many researchers has not not uh, like good uh, confidence in the area of production code and deployment. They are more like researchers, so they don't know how to deploy. And you are providing this functionality for them to easily deploy the models. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you're still expecting them to do the research work outside of your platform. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Exactly, and then uh, they will just grab the model and copy it to the platform and it should work. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. So, are you going to use any hardware accelerations in your solutions like NVIDIA cards? Yeah, yeah, de definitely. Uh, the, uh, we, we are developing the system uh, using also a server which has uh, two uh, GPUs. We use it for, for training. Uh, in the installation of the Cognity Hub uh, in cost customer side. Uh, we also suppose that the customer can have uh, GPUs and uh, it can be useful not only for training specific models, for instance, uh, their uh, consultant can come to the, to, to the customer and train a new model by transfer learning on the customer own data, but it can be also useful for uh, inference, uh, for instance, if, if you uh, want to classify uh, video files that there is a lot of frames, so in this case it's very useful to, to have a GPU. So, do you plan to deploy TPU hardware inside the MF printers? No, 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 no I, 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 I'm not aware about this. Uh, I think currently uh, there are these solutions are not widely available. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, can you describe the system behind the kine kinetic camera? I think it should be Kinect camera. Uh, I think it's, it's <laughs> Kinect. Well, what exactly do you mean by this question? Well, there is a, if, if you want just high level information, there is a camera. And uh, and syn synchronized uh, depth sensor, so you you can have RGBD uh, image, so you have more information. And uh, this is uh, how it is used in, uh, in all the environments. That's the reason why people use Kinect because it has the additional information, and it is very cheap. So it's uh, like another layer in the. In in the input of the neural networks. 
uh, we, we didn't use it uh, in our case, but this is how it is standardly done, uh, that you have basically four channels for the image. Okay, so maybe the question is like, how do you use it, then, if you didn't uh, uh, put it inside the network? Ah, uh, okay. We, we get the depth from, from the place where we detected the hand, and then assign it to, to the particular user that we had uh, in, that was sitting around the table. So just for identify, identifying the person? Exactly. It's, it, there is something like automatically detecting person from the clinic? Uh, no, no, because it was the first proof of concept and we just wanted to show that uh, it could work. Uh, we, we had some limits where people could see. Could see. Okay. Uh, but uh, it's a very interesting uh, question was about whether we use it in, in our neural network. If we use that, we didn't have that problem yeah. that we had. <laughs> we basically solved the problem with exactly. shadows and reflections and everything, right? Exactly. How do you collect training data? Um, well, uh, as I described, the models that we used, uh, most of them were pre-trained. So, and, uh, so it was trained on the large scale data sets, so we didn't have to train them for our own purposes. And uh, we also use the partner solution that have already trained networks. Uh, we only train that for uh, for the recognition of charts, and uh, we have really small data set where we just wanted to try that it can work. And this was uh, uh, this data set was created by me, and I did it manually because it was not that large. Okay, and it seems like the last questions. You mentioned the big picture goal of AI for the office. Can you describe this vision more? What is the concrete example for right now and for one, two years in the future? Okay, in our roadmap, uh, one of the first use cases is, uh, is uh, the technology that we call smart search. Uh, which, is basic, which was basically described here uh, during the presentation where we want uh, to give the user the ability to search through the information a more, a more bit intelli in an intelligent way not only based on the uh, keywords that have to be manually created or using the full text search because this is not the really intelligent way uh, but then we want to understand, in, in future, we want to understand the behavior of the, uh, of the user, making the models more personalized. For example, uh, you can, if you imagine the uh, human-computer interaction, and if you are intera interacting with the, with the computer by voice, you have, everyone has a different voice, Everyone has a different accent, language, so you can provide much better solution if you personalize the models for the user himself. Okay, thank you very much uh, for the questions and for the talk. <laughs>